So good to be with you all today. I love the music that was shared. I especially love the blessing of having Michael's child Nora with us during the prayer. How beautiful and sweet to have a child with us during our prayers, to have our families surrounding us in our moments of joy and sorrow and prayer. Thank you so much, beloveds, for being here today. Our text today for today's sermon comes to us from our sister and prophet, Asara Shakur. I often quote Asara because she is reflective to me of the sacrifice that comes with trying to get all of our people free. It is not without risk. And for those who can least afford it, the risks have been paid at the highest prices. And that must change. Sister Sakur says, no one is going to give you the education you need to overthrow them. No one is going to teach you your true history, teach you your true heroes, if they know that that knowledge will help set you free. My education about my ancestral home of Borigen was never formal. It was never taught in our schools, the way we learn about Florida via Ponce de Leon or California, the California gold rush and the California missions. I, I vividly recall in the third grade having to do a report about how essential to California de development the, uh, the missions were. We don't learn about it the way we learned about New England or New York or Washington DC. It's never even mentioned as the first landing place of Christopher Columbus in the Americas as though somehow its place in the history of the colonization of our Americas is not worthy. This withholding is the beginning of what Sister Shakur means when she says that no one is going to give you the education you need to overthrow them. No, quite the opposite, right? They are going to give you the education you need to keep them in power. We are colonized at the earliest times of our childhood with fables like a peaceful thanksgiving and a welcoming of the pilgrims. It is no mistake that it is reinforced everywhere we look and with everything we consume here in the United States. So for me, it was my family who gave me the education I needed for my freedom. They gave it to me in music, in food, in love, in laughter, in language, and in spirit. It was with a reverence for our ancestors whose sacrifice could, could never be forgotten. And with that information that directly conflicted what I was being taught in school and made for difficult conversations about what I now understand as code switching, but to me at the time of my childish ignorance, I thought I was being told to lie. How could I know one truth and a lie, a lie, and allow a lie to be told? Moreover, how did I repeat the lie in order to get ahead without becoming a liar myself? without diminishing myself and my family, that which I knew to be true. That's pretty salty stuff for a five-year-old to try and comprehend. And thus began this never ending struggle to both colonize and decolonize my mind and soul. It was the birth of my own children, Andreas and Miguel, which began my latest season of decolonizing my mind. 
I knew that it was now my sacred responsibility to teach them about our culture and our truth. I'm not gonna lie, it felt overwhelming. I was being gifted with these two precious souls and it was taking all of my energy and time and spirit, just keeping them alive, keeping them fed, keeping them uh, you know, well slept, all of those things that we know comes along with new, ch new, new children in our lives. How on earth was I supposed to also give them a whole alternate curriculum? And then I realized, I was already thinking in that colonized way, using those colonized words, I, curriculum, alternate. I looked back to my own childhood and I realized it was never any specific person. It was never any textbook that gave me a sense of who I was and where I came from. It was our family, our community, and that's what I needed to build for our children. It wasn't easy, but Unitarian Universalism came into my world just about the right time then as well a spiritual home where we could raise our children with the security of love that allows questioning and alternate thinking, a theology that provided not just a place of wondering, but required a commitment to liberation. In effect, a commitment to decolonizing our minds and our souls in order to provide for the heaven on earth, which we know to be possible. Over the years, my personal and vocational callings have required me to set aside those qualities I'd learned under colonization. Among them, the idea that I earned the good things in my life. As an adult, when I first began returning to Boriquen, which we also known as Puerto Rico. I started to return because it was, I thought that I had earned the right to rest and relaxation. I had finally worked hard enough and sacrificed enough to be able to take time off of work. This was the colonization story I told to myself so that I could take a vacation to Puerto Rico. Friends, what I learned is there is no taking a vacation to your ancestral homeland. There is only coming home. But it was confusing. It was a confusing coming home. I came into the airport and I was uncomfortable. I didn't realize where the discomfort came from. There, there were all of these people who looked like me. They, there was all of this beautiful Spanish language, this, this sense of community in the air, this food smells, uh, the music. It, it all felt like home, but it also felt terribly uncomfortable. And I realized, I realized as I was walking through that airport that what I was uncomfortable about is that no one was looking at me. No one was looking at me as the other. No one was paying any attention to me at all. And in my small rural Virginia town in which I was making a home for myself and my family, I was always looked at as the other. I was always used to going out into public and having people look at me and me having to automatically think friend or foe. That was what coming home felt like, knowing that I didn't have to assess friend or foe. Don't get me wrong. As I've returned again and again to Boriquen, there have been times when I don't feel Boricua enough. 
I don't speak the language well enough. My accent is this terrible, terrible mishmash between uh, Mexican Spanish and uh, Puerto Rican Spanish. I can't keep up because the Spanish here is so fast. It's like they have a time limit on the words that you have to say. And there are things that go on here that I still don't understand. And maybe I never will. And that's okay. It's still home. As I've been trying to learn what it means to be Daño, that's the name of the native people to Borigen. I learned that I have a right to repatriate myself to my ancestral homelands. And I also learned that that would be no easy task, that colonization would thwart me at that at every step of the way. It has taken me many years to throw off the colonized notion that I had to earn my right to return to Borinquen. Years of intentional work around learning the real history of this island, working on my Spanish, traveling the island to find a place that feels like home, reconnecting with family who I had not seen since childhood. And those were also the years in which I was falling more and more in love with Unitarian Universalism. It's liberatory message which affirmed that we all must work for our collective freedom. Indeed, it, it is the most central calling of our faith. It is a faith that demands our work in decolonizing our mind and souls. Indeed, like any other faith, it is one that requires work and acts of sacrifice. So I ask you, beloveds, what is the work? What is the sacrifice you are making or are willing to make to create heaven on earth? For it will not happen without our work. It will not happen on its own. There are too many forces at work against it. Forces I name as evil. Forces at work that do not want to assume that our good intentions alone will see that heaven on earth to existence. Decolonizing our minds and souls cannot occur without purpose, just as that colonization did not occur without purpose. So beloveds, I ask you to set your purpose. You set your goal and then you work yourself towards it in every aspect of your life as though your life depended on it for it is the only way we will get free. I have begun my repatriation journey this year, beginning to live here in Borinquen, at least part-time. Indeed, today is the first time I've ever preached a sermon from my native homeland. And it feels special, it feels right, it feels magical. It feels like coming home. And I'm so glad to share it with you all. One of Asada Shapur's most famous quotes is, she says, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. That one quote is so personally powerful for me that it appears several different places in my home. It has been a guiding light in how I've raised my children and how I move in the world. And it is also a guiding light of my responsibility in decolonizing my spirit. It is my duty. It is our duty. 
We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you for being on this journey with me, beloveds. I look forward to it with you. Amen. Blessed be in Ashe.